it's time to discover crypto because we have Ethereum breaking out into all-time levels and we got a bold prediction what's going to happen next. And then we go into the charts to ask the question, will history repeat itself? Let's dig in. Capital flight is coming to the United States. The dollar is going to zero. And that's what makes Bitcoin so special. You have to have gone through a couple cycles to understand. Once the price is able to clear this level, the breakout is on its way. This is your indication to jump in now. Very special episode today. We don't have Josh on the ones and twos. Josh is in Panama. Uh, I believe he's investigating the Dorian Gap, or he's mm. there for a crypto conference. I don't know which two, uh, but we have Kelly and Drew. It might be a off the chain episode. Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I you know, posted a lot of charts this weekend, and all of them currently are uh, going right with the predictions I was making. Markets are pumping. I hope everybody here has some green in your portfolio. If not, you need to reevaluate what's going on because the markets are looking good. We got some great signals to show on this episode too. You know what? Let me go ahead and start this. We have a video coming out tonight that I filmed on Friday because we have a we have a whole crew that is out in Panama right now. So uh, Josh is out there. TJ's out there. Uh, we have Owen's out there. Mm -hmm. Aaron, our camera, our editor. We have all type of people are making our thumbs. We have a whole crew out in Panama right now. So I filmed a whole lot of content on Friday. I filmed a video and I was like, you know what? These are three altcoins I'm looking at is Rand's picks. Rand had a list of 20 altcoins. I said, these are the three I have my eye on. One of them just exploded everybody. We'll look at that in the price charts. I would say you still need to watch that video because look at the other two coins. Now, I predicted three coins. One coin almost doubled over the weekend. I'd be looking at those other two folks. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, I think if we just get right into the market watch here. Bitcoin. Let me go ahead and refresh because, yeah, I was going to say it feels like it's green because they had it as red. No, it is up 1.7%. Ethereum, 2.3%. Are we at 22-month high right now? Are we at it right now? We're at it right now, folks. Folks, this is major news for Ethereum. If we go to the one-year chart, it has not been this high in almost two years. we got to go back about 24 months uh, last time we saw it this high. And if you look right here, April, or yeah, we're looking at April, folks. It's almost March, okay? This is a very, very long time ago that Ethereum has been at these levels. Kelly is going to identify some uh, breakout patterns as well, right? Now, I don't mean, uh, you know, like uh, my, my acne. Right. You, you are going to identify some breakouts, though? We got some great things in the charts right now, and there's this is it's important. Even if you don't hold Ethereum, or even if you don't hold Bitcoin, maybe you're all altcoins, you have to pay attention to this broader context of all these things that are moving with Bitcoin and Ethereum, because this is going to be a signal for what's happening with the altcoins. And I think we have some explosive things coming. So everybody, make sure you hit the like if you have any crypto at all, because we're about to break it down. All right, breaking it down. We got an algo knot in the chat. We also got a MAGA knot. Is that, mm. is that what we're calling it? The, the MAGA uh, horde there? Someone <laughs> just finally capitulated about the top. I, I can't get myself to do it, although I do think it might go to $10. Uh, all right, let's go look at some of these other coins, though. We have BNB up 3.5%. We have uh, XRP. The only coin in the top 10 that is declining, it is down 0.6%, but it's yeah. got a nice little pump on the one hour here. Yeah. Cardano is up 2.6%, and we keep scrolling just to look for some major moves. Polygon is up 7.4%. Uniswap still getting some gains, but if you look at the seven-day right there, you can see still trying to uh, you know reclaim some of the higher levels from earlier. Uh, but you know what? On that 24-hour chart, doing a pretty good job, but uh, still hasn't hit that peak 1262 uh, still right now trading below $12. So, you know, maybe keep an eye out for when that eventually breaks out. I do think it'll hit, you know, 50, 60 bucks again. Uh, the cycle stacks, stacks is up 7.2%. Now it's time for the biggest winners and the biggest gainers. And everybody, I recommend go ahead, hit that like button. If you hit that like button, you guarantee your favorite coin will be at the top of this list. Uh, that statement will be true for some people. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, I want to keep reading some chat. Life change money vibes. Folks, if you do want to change your lives, we bring you live content Monday through Friday, five days a week. We also have you content coming to you seven days a week, but we're live five. Now, uh, let's look at the biggest gainers, and I, I assume they hit the like button. Did we get a spike, Drew? A little spike. Well, don't worry, folks. I won't cut down the stream if we don't get a major spike, but I hmm. would like to see a major spike here. Flare. Speaking hey. of fight, uh, spikes there, we had a spike on the sun. A solar flare is happening. Yeah. Flare is up 50% exactly <laughs> on the week here. 34.8%. Mantle up 11%. V-Chain. 
I don't know why my voice changed when V, you know, V chain. V chain. I, I didn't mean to sound surprised oh, to all the V chain holders. DZ wasn't surprised that V chain's one of the top three gainers. So let me look again. V chain. Uh, v chain is up 10.6%. Gala's up. Theta Network's up. Near is up. Apecoin is up. Uh, Polygon is up. Some of the uh, the winners we've been choosing here. Uh, it's good to see Polygon, just a good, strong project, you know, doing pretty well. Kelly, any of these uh, in the top five or so just, you know, really standing out to you? Well, I mean, VeChain is, is a, it's a good analogy for a lot of different altcoins in the space. Things have these narratives that pop and they're, you know, in the zeitgeist, everybody talking about them. Then they sort of feel like they leave the, the talking points of different people in the space. It doesn't mean they're less valuable. This is why you also don't jump between different projects. Figure out what project that you're trying to really capture the moves on and do diligence on them and, and, and get your positions. And if that's not moving while something else is, then you need to be a little bit more patient because we'll see just like right now, Gala coming back to life, VeChain coming back to life. Some of these coins I actually added to my portfolio this weekend, which I shared in Discord. I'll talk about it in a little bit. But Ooh. VeChain, supply chain, they got a lot of different partnerships. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't sleep on them. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't sleep on them as well, but I would sleep on WorldCoin. WorldCoin is down a 7.4%. I do think Sam Altman uh, will pump the heck out of this token. I wouldn't be surprised to see it hit $100. Uh, Filecoin is... I'm not recommending buy it, though. Filecoin is down 5%. Singularity down 3.8%. But if you look at the weekly there, it is up 35%. So maybe some healthy profit taking right it's there. It's almost as if there was some capital rotation from the DPIM projects into the other narrative that mm -hmm. the gaming, the, you know, Theta video, uh, you know, it's interesting how these things capital flows between them. Yeah. You know what? We used to be able to telegraph Bitcoin, Ethereum, mid caps, small caps, then meme coins. Maybe it's going to be more of narrative shifts. Like after AI pumps, then, you know, then you see these pump after gaming pump, maybe this will pump maybe after L ones, we'll see L two. So it uh, might be an interesting narrative to, to keep a track on and maybe even make a video on that. But uh, let's get into the top story here, everybody. Ethereum hitting a 22-month high. Uh, I think we're pretty close to a 23-month high at this point. Where will Ethereum go next? They're at the highest levels since April 22, with the asset reclaiming the psychological $3,000 level again. It fell below. Now it's right back above. Uh, 31.25 on the peak here. But if we look just at the freshest, freshest price feed, wow, we're right there, folks. 3.125. Uh, just knocking on the door of these uh, previous all-time highs here for uh, at least for this year. Uh, let's see. Jacob Canfield observed that ETH had flipped support and resistance several times. It's now targeting 3350 level. Uh, we're going to have, don't worry, we're going to go deep into the charts and look at some Ethereum here. The asset's been on fire in February, climbing from 2260 on the first of the month to over 3100 by the end of it. The Toshi flipper was also bullish on ETH, saying 10K for one token at the blow off top. Is already programmed. Uh, folks, there was one coin I recommended after the ETF of Bitcoin. Those launched January 11th. I'm just curious to see if, if I would have listened to my own advice. Uh, let's see, January 11th. Okay, so the ETH ETF news, it, it created a local high. So you know what? It would have been good to wait about a week. But yeah, you could have got in $2,200 less than a month ago, and you were sitting pretty good, uh, gaining almost a K on that $2,200 Ether there. Uh, Grayscale, folks, this is uh, some. I'm going to look at this. I'm going to go into the charts, and I'm going to pass the charts to Kelly here, maybe before Bitcoin outflows, which is a good segue. Grayscale Research identifies Den Kuhn upgrade as a coming-of-age event for Ethereum. I think we have three main catalyst for Ethereum uh, over the next couple months. One, we have the Bitcoin halving. We have the Din Kuhn upgrade. And then we have the ETH ETF chatter. Now, a lot of analysts are saying April, May potential for the ETH ETF. I, I'm coming in, uh, you know, just agreeing with the Bloomberg analysts there. So three huge catalysts. All are bullish for Ethereum. And then this is all setting up. But be careful with the FOMO, folks, because ETH has just jumped up $1,000 in about a month. So do you want to jump in at $1,000? Well, you know, Justin Sun did. I, I will say that. But uh, yeah, we do have the Din Kuhn upgrade coming here in a new report from Grayscale's Frame Din Kuhn as a coming-of-age event for the network. It's like it's a sweet 16, allowing it to grow up and solidify its ETH 2.0 proposal. It states that Ether is ready to reap the benefits of this upgrade, which makes it more modular alongside other factors. When I think of retail coming in and why do they want to buy ETH? Well, I want it to be more modular, right? Does that get you excited, Drew? 
Can't so wait. modular, man. I look at my ETH bag and my MetaMask. I'm like, oh man, you're so, so modular. modular. So modular. I'm so modular, bro. <laughs> bro. All right. So the adolescence phase, according to Grayscale, uh, is marked by its slow transaction speeds, low throughput, and high cost for users. Incoon aims to solve all of these problems, deepening the modular design of their expansion and tackling the high fee throughput problem simultaneously. I said I was going to take you into the charts, everybody. This hmm. was 2021. Get in your DeLorean. Go 88. We're in the past right now. It's, uh, this is two years ago. I'm sorry. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is three years ago. The Berlin hard fork was the previous large upgrade. It happened on April 15th. This was a major, major upgrade. All right, so we're going to go back. This is the daily chart. We're going to go way back, folks. We're around the $3,000 level, okay? We're going to go back. Oh, my God. Whoa, look at that. Oh, okay. I didn't mean to stretch it that much. All right, this line right here is the upgrade. This is April 15th, 2021. We just got off a whole string of green candles. Everybody said, oh, it's going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news. Buy the rumor, sell the news. You do not want to be in this coin after this. And guess what? The upgrade hit. It was a buy the rumor, sell the news. Wow, look at that, folks. It did fall. It fell. I mean, we can catch that little wick right there. And whoa, you know, that was, that was a huge change in about one day. Uh, 20%. That actually is kind of a lot, folks, for a couple of days there. So it fell 20%. Well, it shook you out of the markets. You're scared. You no longer want to be in ETH. And then look what happened. It set a record number of green daily candles here. Uh, let's not even try to do moon math and say you caught. You didn't catch this bottom. You didn't catch this bottom. You barely caught this bottom. You then uh, ran that up to 100% pump, folks. So that, I just want to highlight that to you. There's going to be a lot of buy the rumor, sell the news. It could be, but I'm going to be on the sidelines waiting to scoop any dip for that Din Kuhn upgrade happening soon. But uh, let's just get right into the chart since I got up trading view here. Uh, Kelly, I heard you're in the Discord telling people about ETH, saying it's a good buy, saying we got a breakout happening. Was that true? Were those rumors? I was dropping some alpha this weekend. I, I updated everybody on the different uh, portfolio, uh, portfolio moves that I made, but also I shared some of it on Twitter as well. And in this chart right here, this was, uh, what is, this, what is today the 26th? Yeah, this was yesterday showing this ETH breakout, uh, breaking out of this long-term resistance as well as money flow popping up. And if we see right here, the reason why this is important is because if we zoom out on this chart, we, I mean, look at how, and this is the ETH to Bitcoin chart. This goes all the way back till September, August, August, September, 2022. The reason why this is important, even if you're not trading the ETH to Bitcoin chart, this gives you a signal of, where the capital is flowing in the market and if we're going to start seeing some injection of capital, rotation of capital into those altcoins. So let's actually look at ETH on the ETH US dollar chart. So when we're, uh, that's, yeah, there it is. Uh, looking at this chart right here, this is a 12 hour. Let's get down to the two hour. Let's look at something a little bit more uh, zoomed in here. This is very important. This red line, it may not feel like a lot, but if we zoom out, we can see that this channel that we've been in goes all the way back until October 2022. Now, furthermore, that price level you just talked about, this is this dotted line here. This is a current price. Last time we were at this price was April 2022, much like you said. So we're really hitting some bullish levels here. And the interesting thing about this is that not only did we break above this line, look at this textbook resistance, breakthrough, retest, another attempt up, retest again. And then now currently, we can't call it launching yet because we need to clear this this high right here, but things are looking very bullish. Things are looking very bullish. Now, when we consider this along, and we also see volume coming in here, which is absolutely beautiful when we're looking at what's going on in this chart. Now, when we come over here and look at uh, uh, Bitcoin, I shared this chart as well in the Discord, uh, and then a few hours later shared it on my Twitter, and that is these, these parallel channels that Bitcoin has been basically very much respecting both support and resistance all the way up. We can see that not only do we have this breakout of the zone, we have a, a bit of a bull flag that is on this as well. But the, there is a little bit of concern, and that is that things are getting very overheated. But I'm, I'm starting to ignore this because a bullish sentiment is starting to become a reflexive thing where it's actually becoming more of a bullish thing, even, even, uh, even though there's some signs of, of worry, I should say, of all this profitability in the market. Now, looking at this, on the four hour chart, this is that bull flag we talked about. The interesting thing about this bull flag is the target up here is $64,000. So are we gonna move straight up there? I don't think we're gonna move straight up like this, 
But we have, a, I think there's going to be very quick movement if we clear the $53,000 level. There's a lot of liquidations in the zone. So if we do, I do think we're going to get a pop up to the fifty six dollars to $58,000 region. If the market does move against us, you always have to look on the contrary view. Even if you're very bullish, I think that this is going to be a good uh, level to watch if we do have a drop down uh, right here into this 46 k region. Now, I'm very bullish right now. So let's just all hit that like button for the markets. Absolutely pumping. And the last thing I just wanted to show, Cardano came down in this, uh, this broadening wedge, retested up here, came down, found support here. We have a W formation. Cardano looks like it wants to rip. Is that a megaphone pattern? It's a broadening wedge. Broadening wedge. Yeah. Okay. Broadening wedges. So broadening wedges angled up tend to break down and brought, you know, patterns on charts that point to the upside tend to break down and patterns that point down. Typically. To, okay. Yeah, so yeah. A megaphone is more horizontal, right? Like a megaphone pattern is just kind of like going uh, yeah, yeah. Is horizontal. When you start going up, it changes names. Well, they're, they're broadening wedges. Some people call it a megaphone. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So a megaphone is a broadening wedge. Yes. So when I said, is it a megaphone? You said no. Why'd you lie to me? Because the uh, correct term is broadening wedge. Yeah, but you lied. It's all good. But near also. It's not good. Near is liar also. Face. Near's rip into the upside too. We kind of have a very sideways. I don't want to call this an inverse head and shoulder, but very similar. We got a target on this. Uh, near, I, I expect big things from uh, in this next bull market. Near? Do, Near near protocol. And, I mean, this, I, I'm I've been all right. Yeah, can you zoom out? Show more of that price action because I've been looking at near. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Now we're starting. How high was near at one point? You mean the all time high? Yes. Uh, well, this is, I have to go to a different chart. Hold on. Okay. Near. Well, I can I can pull it up on Coin Gecko we real go. quick. Uh, all the way up here, twenty dollars, twenty twenty point five. Wow, it's up ten percent today. Yeah, I, mean, I have it, a little bit. I wish I had more. Yeah, GRT is coming back. Nice moves here. Render is also still pushing high. I mean, things are looking good. Quant is one of those ones that I think for some reason, I don't know if there's suppression or what, or narratives or somewhere else, but Quant has just been hovering at this 96 to $100 region, even though we had this, uh, uh, this is a three-day chart. Let's go right. Uh, we could see this has just been hovering in this region for some time, uh, and I, I've been kind of quietly stacking up on that. Fetch AI. Also, look, this is that broadening wedge, that megaphone pattern broke to the downside, but now is looking like it has that pressure to potentially move higher. Things are looking good in the market. I'm feeling good. I'm going to be breaking down these charts more on the BitLab stream after this, but we got a lot of other stuff to talk about today. Yeah, we got a lot to get through, and I got a couple more ETH thing, but you pulled up the ETH Bitcoin trading pair. I just want to pull up the Cardano Bitcoin trading pair real quick. we share my screen here. Uh, we kind of were in a just, a just a falling pattern. We broke out of that range. This range fell all the way back to September. 22. So th this is zoomed out a whole lot, folks. This is a year and a half ago that we kind of broke out. And you see, oh man, one Cardano is worth much more Bitcoin in the past. This is the September blow off top when Cardano hit around $3. I just want to show something to you folks. If Cardano were to double its sats, it only goes that high. Triple its sats. Quadruple its sats quintuple it's at six uh septuple and then you're like all right well that's moon math man that's where it went last cycle look where it went the cycle before that it was even higher folks so uh we're talking about uh some serious gains could be had here that would and i don't think it'll ever go up the this high again whoa 666 six, six, that's spooky i'm Ooh. just gonna get it off that screen whoa freaking me out all right uh more eth stuff real quick though i, I did say okay eth whales investing half a billion dollars in 48 hours here's what to expect well let's just look right at it Justin's son, alleged wallet, continues Ethereum buying spree. Got another forty-one million dollars. Uh, has made substantial ETH purchases, total four hundred and eighty-seven million dollars. I would keep an eye out on this wallet if it starts selling, everybody. So it uh, looks like it's acquired thirteen thousand, almost fourteen thousand ether, uh, just from Binance just twelve hours ago. So he is buying, and he's buying fresh, and he's buying off the market. He's buying heavy, folks. Uh, it looks like is now uh, secured. 168,000 individual ether right there. There's a whole lot right there. So adding another 18, adding another 17, <sighs> adding another 10, uh, adding another 50. Uh, yeah, the man is up to a half billion right now. We, we've we long said, you know, he can call tops. He can talk, call bottoms. Just just something to keep an eye out on. Uh, so the big whales are purchasing tons and tons of ETH. What does that mean? Well, you know, I it means for me, I like to swim with the whales, not swim against them uh, right now. Uh, let's see here. Shake and bake. Uh, not a good, that would have been much cheaper. When Zill break out, a lot of people talk about Zill, uh, AOs. I think that's how you say it. They're saying 
tokenomics look better than tia i bought some tia today so now i need to go check it out after the stream Mm. it's it's low it was around what 25 and it's like 18 16 so i was like all right i had to do a dca i didn't do it on friday so i just fomoed in today uh, we do have ETH ecosystem continue to rally. We kind of covered that. All right, let's talk about some Bitcoin outflows, though. Bitcoin exchange outflows surge to an eighth-month high. What is next here? Saying bullish signs despite the recent stag- uh, stagnation on its price here. Uh, so on-chain analytics platform into the block shows $540 million worth of Bitcoin moved out of exchanges last week. This is the highest outflow in eight months, signaling a significant shift in investor sentiment. Uh, so eight month high for uh, outflows here uh, since the launch of the ETFs in January. This metric has shown a steady rise in net outflows. This week's record breaking outflows suggest investors increasingly confident in the long term potential of Bitcoin. So we have investors increasingly confident in Bitcoin. Justin Sun increasingly in co- uh, confident in Ethereum leading up to, uh, you know, while everyone's waiting for this correction. You know, the market could defy the trend here, everybody. So just keep an eye out on that. Uh, will Bitcoin reach 60K? Analyst weighs in on the trend. Now, Kelly, what was that range we were hitting? 63? The target from the bull flag that we have currently is $64,000. And again, that's I don't think we're going to just shoot up to that. I think we're going to have some work along the way. Uh, at least I would hope so. Otherwise, we're going to fall down quickly. But 64K is a target. And that was the, you know, we had the double top last cycle, 64 yes. And then 69. So we'd be testing regionally basically the previous all time high. You know what's interesting? Uh, the real value of Bitcoin might have been higher in April than it was in November at 69K because of the cost of uh, the adjustment for inflation. The adjustment inflation. And not only that, that was like peak money printer time. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. I always ask the question uh, we'd have to do the math. And me and Drew, we, we've all talked about this. The $63,000 Bitcoin might have been worth more than the $69,000 Bitcoin if you were to say, how many steel beams can I yeah. purchase? How many eggs can I purchase? How many gallons of milk would this Bitcoin buy me versus 69K? So when we're at 80K, 100K Bitcoin could still potentially be worth less than 63. That just lets you know, well, maybe it can hit 200. Maybe it can hit 260K. Uh, Bitcoin, a price prediction for bullish here. Is the trend still bullish? The shorter six-hour time frame gets more bullish readings than the daily one. Uh, because of the positive price action since the February high, the price has decreased in a descending parallel channel. And uh, as Kelly was just saying minutes ago, typically speaking, if it's heading down, it's typically bullish. If it's heading up, it's typically bearish. So we have this descending channel, typically that is bullish. It's not every time. A lot of these charges, like 67% of the time, it will do this. And, and it's going to take into, you also have to take into account what the macro picture is and the other things. Because we've seen in previous altcoin cycles, for instance, large multi-month rising channels. And some would say, well, it must break down because, well, when you look at the context of where the market cycle is, mm-hmm. that will sort of negate those things. So you have to take the the, the larger picture into consideration. Uh, speaking, taking some into consideration, there's a larger picture with micro strategy, the largest buyer. Well, there's a narrative that was happening. Do you guys saw that they got hacked over the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. So micro strategy, their X account was actually hacked. Well, what did they do 48 hours later? Uh, Here, I put this tweet out here. If you don't like the conversation, change the topic. To quote Don Draper, MicroStrategy, less than 24 hours after a hack on their X account, led to a half million being drained, announced another Bitcoin purchase. It paid an average 51,000 per Bitcoin. MicroStrategy now holds 193,000 Bitcoin. And I posted that on my X account. If we go to Zach XBT, uh, hold on, don't share this screen. I just don't know what's going on on this. This isn't my account here, so who knows what uh, the editing team. So Zach XBT, uh, you can share it here. Uh, let's see here, uh, Bit4X. He, he's always tweeting. All right, that's a D-God scam. There's always scams here. Uh, so many scams, I can't even find them all. Uh, maybe he didn't tweet about it. Oh, you know, it's in his replies. That's what it is. I didn't find it. But yeah, Zach XBT, he tweeted about it. Uh, and then I think they're already on the way of recovering a lot of these funds here. Um, man, that guy is just, he's, he's always there. sleuthing. <laughs> yeah, he's always sleuthing there. Uh, yeah, Zach XBT, if, uh, check him out. It's like every CoffeeZilla starts with a Zach XBT tweet. All right, uh, new Satoshi lore. Oh, all right, let me kind of cover the story. So they bought 3,000 Bitcoin. The portfolio now surpasses $10 billion. 193,000 Bitcoin. <sighs> Folks, at 210,000, that's 1% of all Bitcoin that'll ever be mined. That's nuts, right? He's hogging it. He's, He's hogging it. it. 
And it's, he's going to be able to like build, buy a whole nation in 20 years if he keeps this up. I mean, all right. Know. Michael Saylor starts a nation on a floating barge. Drew, mm. do you bring the family? You Absolutely. become a new citizen. Absolutely. You know, okay. and, and, and get, maybe get a little houseboat just tugging along the side. You know, uh, what do we call time. it? We can't call it micro land uh, unless it's around cold water. Strategia. Strategia. Maybe. Strategia. I don't hate strategia. Would you go live at strategia? It depends on if I had the proper strategery or not. Okay, yeah, you need a good strategery. Uh, I wouldn't want to renounce my citizenship. That would probably be bad. But uh, yeah, it would be a uh, it'd be worth because what do you do when he dies, right? And his right. son is like it's like Peter Schiff. It's like the opposite. He's like a gold bug or something oh, no. and hates Bitcoin, then sells it all. Then it's just like then you feel like you're on the Titanic. You're it looking for a raft saying world. Jack. It, this reminds me of Waterworld. This is a situation that'll probably end up just like water. Underrated movie, right? Yeah. You seen Waterworld? Oh, absolutely. It was overrated and underrated. Hmm. It was overrated because it was the, the largest hype, budget. The hype into it made it seem like it fell short, but it was a great movie. It was a great movie. Yeah, it was uh, the most expensive movie ever made. They made a lot of it in Hawaii uh, before the... <laughs> didn't laugh at that. Uh, they made it in Hawaii, and it's just like if you, you see some of the making of the film, it's like they're floating, and then it's just like the big islands behind them. And so, you know, just think of how much everything costs in Georgia or California. Then you compare it to Hawaii. It's probably crazy making a movie out I, there. I, I just want to pause you for a second because I pulled this up based on uh -oh. what we were talking about earlier. We we're talking about previous all-time high. This is a, a basically a little article from CoinStats, and they're basically looking at the, the adjusted cost of Bitcoin when you look at inflation. And it, it suggests that the based on where the CPI is now and inflation, that a target roughly around 75000 would essentially – be like testing the previous all-time high because things have now, you know, the, the value of the dollar has yeah. dropped so much since then. Mm. Uh, but you know what? It's only 2.9% says the people who are in charge of printing money. And I tend to believe them when they the, say 2.9%. They must not shop at grocery stores because yeah. they know that's a freaking lie. They definitely know that's a lie. Uh, Shake and Bake, I've never seen Waterworld. Uh, listen to Boosted. I like Waterworld as well. Go watch it. Yeah. Uh, definitely go watch it. Classic it's a good one. Kevin Costner. Yeah, and Abyss is good as well. All right, uh, classic <laughs> Costner. Uh, I do want to share this. So their average price today, now I, I reported 51K was the average buying price, but for all 193,000 Bitcoin, they have an average average price of 31,000. Uh, just makes you think of the pizza. When one pizza was sold for 10,000 Bitcoin, oh, no, and then they're right. buying tens of thousands at an average cost of $31,000. My, oh my. Well, uh, there is new Satoshi lore. Uh, new Satoshi emails have revealed the Bitcoin creator says fiat currencies breach people's trust. I don't know if it's confirmed or not. Does he like pineapple on pizza? I think that maybe is a fake one. I don't know if that's real or not. Uh, but it was a slew of emails released by early Bitcoin contributor Marty Malmi who said he wasn't comf comfortable sharing his private correspondence with Satoshi, but s decided to do so after standing as a witness for a trial in the UK Possibly, more than likely, it's uh, due to the Craig Wright trial. So the Craig Wright trial, bro, Craig Wright's fans are kind of saying, nah, man, he could still be Satoshi. And then this guy was like, you know what? Let me just release a whole bunch of emails here. Uh, the root problem with conventional currency, uh, this is Satoshi. This is a quote from Satoshi, the founder of Bitcoin. The root problem with conventional currency is all trust that's required to make it work. The central bank must be trusted not to debase the currency. But the history of fiat currency is full of breaches of that trust. Uh, Satoshi also says that the throughput history, people have always used assets that have a finite supply as money. He knows that people's perception drive the value of a currency more than its use case. Most of the value comes from value that others place in it. Gold, for instance, is pretty non-corrosive, easily malleable. But most of its value is clearly not from that. Brash is shiny, similar in color. The vast majority of gold sits unused in vaults owned by governments that could care less about its prettiness. Until now, no scarce commodity that can be traded over a communications channel without a trusted third party has been available. If there's a desire to take up a form of money that can be traded over the internet without a trusted third party, then now that is possible. Uh, so congrats. Yeah, so, it's pretty cool seeing all so this. So pull up this, uh, pull up my chart, my, my screen here. Mark Moss posted I this know. last week and I thought this was so brilliant. This is just to put it in perspective. 3.4 inflation, which is roughly what they say we're at now, cuts the value of a dollar in half in 21 years. That's in the in the course of your career life. And half again in another 21 years. A 75% devaluation in just 42 years of uh, over the course of a typical career from age 23 to 65. So this is why we're 
yes, they want to bring it down to 2%, but that's a farce anyway. We know that the inflation is higher. And this is why, and I did a post about this on my Twitter this weekend, even if you're still on the fence or your family members or your neighbors are still on the fence about Bitcoin or blockchain because they, they don't trust it, ask them, do they, do they value the fact that every, time, every hour they're spending trading for money, which is what fiat is, you're trading work for your energy for money, and now the government is devaluing the time you spent. And the higher this inflation number is, the more they're stealing from you. So doesn't that warrant at least some investigation into another alternative? Yes, mm. yes, it, because they're stealing your time. You know, it yeah. makes me think of those like little animations of the rat race where it's like all the mouse get in the car, then they're stuck in traffic, then they're in the cubicle, then they just yep. sit in front of the TV all, all night. They're stealing your free time. So they just want you to basically just be an automaton. Uh, I, I want to share a couple. Okay, Crypto Glassworks. Drew, this one is for you. Mm. Everyone I know that has bought chickens and tried to have their own eggs has eventually given up. Drew, you went down that path. Have you given up? Absolutely not. You know, and I mm. let it get out of hand. Um, now, when you say you let it get out of hand, do you have like yeah. a pal world situation where it's I'm, just like okay, pals? I, my woods have eyes now. Okay. <laughs> like there's a lot of chickens. There's a lot of things in the woods. I've attracted some other animals from around town. You know, it's what? getting weird. Yeah. I mean, I got cats Are you talking in about there like and, uh, apex predators, like foxes and wolves? No. Well, they're actually coyote wolf mixes. So they're wolf yotes. Okay. There. Yeah. Sounds so, fake, but I believe it. I know, tend to believe you these um, days. And then there's some deer, but essentially their cats are going after eggs, carcasses, all kinds. Like I got the whole, I mean, we're oh. not close together, but I am attracting some animals into my area. Okay. So it's, it's a, it's a cat. You, you basically yeah. got cats everywhere. Well, and killing chickens. The chickens. Yeah. Yes. Allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. Okay. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah. We don't, we don't, you yeah. know, we, allegedly we, we need on footage <laughs> first. Okay. All right. Well, uh, yeah, Drew hasn't given up, but it sounds like he's on the door. I was, of I was trying up. to ask someone in chat if you're in Northwest Georgia and you want a rooster and a hen, let me know. You know, I'll, yeah, I'll Well, I don't know about given all that situation. No, I, I do want to get some chickens, so maybe, maybe. I did throw a poll in chat there. I'm curious to see how many of you have uh, orange pilled anybody. Uh, if you're just in Bitcoin uh, stealth mode, uh, or if you're slowly planting seeds, let, it'd be interesting to see what what people are doing with their friends and family and neighbors. Uh, uh, to, I got an uncle to put less than one percent in crypto and so i felt good about that yeah i mean you know and, and i saw the short that you did with jeremy and it was such so so good uh about there's different risk levels you know if you're 75 you're probably oh, going to yeah. put a smaller percentage in yeah. and that makes sense and if you're 20 you could be you could be heavily invested in all you know micro cap altcoins we all need to understand what our time horizon is and what kind of risk we could take on but at the end of the day there i think a zero percent allocation is the wrong risk matrix for anybody in the world. Yeah, and it was the uh, it was that post that says something about, you know, if there's two buttons, uh, it was an argument, me and Jeremy, if there's two buttons, one of the buttons, guaranteed million, and the other button, uh, you know, it's a 50-50 shot, uh, 50 million, what you should do. Uh, he was saying there is a correct answer. No, it's, it's all about risk profiles, folks. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Texas Blockchain Council and Riot secure legal win over U.S. energy authorities. This is big because... U.S. Uh, Department of Energy is trying to sneak some like backdoor legislation to basically control the entire Bitcoin network here. And uh, we have Texas fighting them uh, via uh, Riot blockchains here. Uh, so Riot, I'm sorry, Riot platforms regarding what they perceived as an overly intrusive data collection initiative spearheaded by the U.S. Department of Energy. Uh, let's see here. The controversy centered around demand for miners to submit detailed operational data move that plaintiffs argued represented unwarranted incursion into their proprietary business activities. Uh, let's see here. It the, would be the same as them going to oil companies and let them know all the schematics of where they're looking to drill oil. They wouldn't do that. And somehow, and it's, it's proven now, Bitcoin is the greenest inter industry on earth, and yet they're still thinking that somehow this is a bad thing. It's just ignorance and, and, and you know, the, the Rockefeller controls. Uh, Helium versus IMX. h and versus IMX. Bigger gains. They're both going to be pretty good projects. Helium's on Solana. Immutable's uh, ETH Layer 2. I want to say my thesis says Immutable's going to be better because they have gasless transactions. And right now, that is a seem that cool. When everyone's talking about $70 gas fees, oh, we'll go to L2. And you're like, it's still $7. I think Immutable might be but, uh, a big Immutable winner there. But Immutable is also a bit more of an ecosystem, you know, that it's going to be building. True. Than Helium being an independent single single thing. True, true. Uh, but to me, that makes IMX a little bit more bullish. Right, exactly. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, thanks for the Ordi Swap Alpha last week. Think just dropped it at the end of the show. Yeah, uh, we were saying by Ords, uh, Ordi Swap. I didn't listen. Did you? I was going to, and I, I didn't. Yeah, I meant to. I meant to. I need some Bitcoin L2 uh, ecosystem plays here. And our thesis was, and the thesis played out beautifully. I just, there's only so many you could buy. Yeah. It was exchanges. Uniswap just had a huge pump. Uniswap had a big change. And then we saw that domino start to fall to other exchanges. Uniswap basically said, if you hold our token, we give you revenue. And then the other exchanges said, oh, that's probably a good idea. So I said, hey, you know, now's the time to invest in exchanges. And uh, that actually takes us to a story there. Frax, uh, actually Frax Finance mold a Uniswap-like reward mechanism for token stakers. Folks, we kind of gave you the alpha there uh, to jump ahead of this narrative there. And I love this guy and... Uh, uh, what was it Deus X? What was it AI? What's the AI movie where the guy hooks up with the robot? Oh, X Machina. X -Machina. That's, X -Machina. that's him, right? That's yeah. the guy in X Machina. Oh, it looks kind of like him. It looks exactly like the guy <laughs> yeah. in X Machina. All right. Uh, so yeah, Frax Finance, uh, folks. We said this might be a possibility, and it looks like it played out just in a couple of days there. Uh, so we feel good about that. So exchange tokens, uh, or decentralized exchange tokens, might be benefiting from that. Uh, Arbitrum reporting a nice little revenue boost ahead of the Din Kuhn upgrade. I expect L2s to be big winners uh, with this Din Kuhn upgrade. And remember what I showed you on Trading View. Oh, sorry, that was the Bitcoin or ADA pair. Uh, you know, the Din Kuhn upgrade, probably going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news. If it works, though, keep it up. Bitcoin booming. Let's get All over right. to the chart. Let's get right into Bitcoin. We got Charty Holy McChart moly. face here. Charty McChart face. What Ooh. are you seeing? We're seeing some rippage to the upside. I mean, whoa, yeah, look whoa. at this. We cleared, I want to see a five minute we, candle. We cleared. This is the one hour. Let's go to the five minute. Yeah, we did get, clear. We whoa. did clear this previous uh, high, and we, uh, we broke that fifty three level. And what it, what did I say earlier? If it lo if it breaks this level, it's likely to move quickly. And this is this is already jumped three percent in the matter uh, of about two hours. Uh, so this this is looking really good. Money flows positive. Yeah, I mean, all it, right. I bought Tia before the stream. <laughs> did Tia pump? Did Tia benefit off this pump? I bought some Tia this weekend as well. Because okay. let's go to Tia. I'm just wondering, did it get like a crazy rip off the five minute? Uh, we'll, Don't tell me that's a five minute and it's no, that, down. No, here we go. Okay, okay. It is starting to push up. Not not a huge amount, but I mean, it's it's up about six percent. Okay, over the last couple okay. of days. We'll take that. Uh, actually, the last couple of hours. How how long? Six hours, it's up about 6%. Uh, but I will say, this is one of those coins, some people were asking me when I was stacking into that altcoin portfolio that I've been sharing in the Discord and on the BitLab stream, they're wondering why I was stacking into other things and not as much into Tia. And it's because if you look at this uh, on a little bit of a macro, this looks like the momentum is slowing down a little bit. So I was waiting for this to get a little bit of a pullback and see where the bulls came in. So I did add some this weekend because I do think uh, if the markets really do start ripping uh, this sort of roundingness is going to be negated and this will likely start pushing up again. So, All right, you got Mike Bennett saying short squeeze. Uh, yeah, we were looking. There's a lot of liquidations. We covered the liquidations Ethereum, a whole lot over the weekend, folks. So, or, I'm sorry, during the week last week. So yeah, it looked like a lot of those people getting wrecked, everybody. And ETH has a little bit of a pump. Uh, we want to share Kelly's screen. Uh, what, what's the current price right now? Well, I got 3161. And then on the. All uh, right. So we got above 3150. Yeah, but uh, on the same note, though, at the same time, we're also seeing because Bitcoin's ripping, we're seeing the uh, ETH, to ETH Bitcoin, Bitcoin trading. But pair. this isn't a bad thing because really remember when we see a break of a certain level, what you what you want to see for some confidence is that you want to see this test. So it's going to be very telling what happens right here with Ooh. Ethereum Bitcoin. If we bounce there, that's going to be very good for the alts. You know, when I did a uh, trading on Blowfin, I need I didn't get a trade in today. I, I meant to get a trade in this morning, but Josh is gone, so I've just been covering a whole lot of stuff here. I didn't get time to get in. Uh, we do have a Blowfin link below if you want to trade with a little leverage, folks. I'm recommending keep it low, keep it like three x, keep it five x. Don't be a forty x demon uh, like some of those people there, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it might be time to, uh, start getting some trades in too, man. I'm going to be getting some trades in, uh, starting later this week and really, cause I've been stacking a position portfolio, but it's time to trade some of this volatility. And I'll be sharing that here on the stream on Blowfin. I think we got our boy JJ in the house too. Is that, is uh, it, wait a minute. It looks like the picture did move. Do we have good internet down there in Panama? Yeah, let's just not do it. I I'm, I'm Josh. I don't know. We can't hear you. I'm looking at your frame rate. You're like. <laughs> yeah yeah i heard what he said he said he said 
But he said, ETH is going up. Yes. Okay. Okay. See, I thought it was uh, the caravans using up all the data usage. Oh, look at that. He's just, ah, he's and, frozen. And, and you see, guys, that's how, that's how good the internet is. So. <laughs> Oh man, uh, he's in the Dorian Gap. Everybody, Her, look it up. Fifty three, right, uh, no, four thirty no, seven on Bitcoin. I'm just feel if if you all are feeling good about this market, hit that like button. Join us here in this family. We we've been a lot of you have been riding, and I'm curious to see what what's your born on date uh, in crypto. What year and what month? Uh, because some people bought in at the top of the last cycle and rode it all the way down and coming back up. And if you if you were one of those people, huge respect to you for believing in it, even though it was dropping and melting people's faces that didn't have a strategy, but the market's coming back. It's feeling good. 53.6. We're up almost 53.7 now. I mean, hey guys. Uh, now folks, I do want to share the Cody chart as well. Someone just put it in the, the chat there. Video tonight saying, hey man, look, at, look out for these altcoins. It might be too late to buy Cody. Now again, I filmed on Friday. I filmed on Friday. I'm so frustrated about this. That was on the 23rd. So I, I filmed it. Maybe me filming it made a pump. No, I, I filmed it was up. So folks, it has taken a serious move, but I give you three coins when I talk about Cody. It isn't just Cody in that video. So you really, really need to watch that video. I, I gave you three coins. One is melting faces uh, here. I, I, I pulled something up. I was like, how often do I talk about Cody? Uh, just bought more Cody. Was going to buy Link, but I like when coins are on sale. Well, I probably should have bought Link. Uh, that was November 22, uh, November 10, talking to Farmer Nosh. Buy Cody. Thank me later. Uh, I like Cody. Filmed a video to say buy Cody. Won't go out till today. I'm still holding Cody in a small amount of Jed. Uh, that if wasn't uh, something. I've I just have to pull this up. This is the Cody chart with the BitLab trading stack. And I just want you to look at this beautiful call right here. Up uh, Potential reversal comes down. A little consolidation. We got the potential reversal here called right on this candle before this just rocketed to the top. A little bit of a slowdown. I mean, the, guys, these markets are ready to do something special. I hope uh, your bags are packed. Mike Bennett, you respect me for riding my portfolio down 88%. Take a ticket. Take a ticket, okay? I'm sure you took <laughs> some profit, but uh, hit that like button if there's at least one coin you rode the whole way down. Hit that like button if you rode that coin down 90%. I do respect that because you didn't get shaken out of the markets. You didn't sell and you didn't capitulate, and you didn't get a 10% pump and just say, you know what, I'm just getting out. Uh, I'm no longer down 88%, now I'm down 81%. No, you uh, you stuck by your conventions, you're, you're watching this, you hit that like button, and we do appreciate it, because it will change your life. The 2020-21 cycle changed my life. I'm ready for this cycle to change my life again. It's going to change yours as well, my friend, but only if you hit that like button and it will send. All right, I don't know why I started sure, rhyming there. The just, today, good. baby. <laughs> That's really good. Cat in the hat in it, baby. Well, uh, let's talk about the kill switch. Mm. All right, Europe, they're coming for you. They're coming for your crypto. And then I'm going to talk about how the elites are lying. It's all going to tie together here. European blockchain at kill switch and how it affects you. Uh, you know what? Reddit did a pretty good uh, summary on this. But as Europe's recent data act implemented last month as a dark cloud over the continent's blockchain industry, uh, Article 30 of this act introduces a kill switch for smart contracts, granting authorities the power to terminate even immutable contracts. Uh, this directly contradicts the core principle of blockchain technology, immutability, and its ramifications are far-reaching. The kill switch poses a serious threat to innovation in several ways. And then I wanted to kind of highlight this. Paul Krugman takes a dig at quote-unquote unbiased inflation dashboard. Their numbers are now coming in lower than the CPI this was a inflation dashboard that used to be unbiased when the government would say, yeah, man, your eggs and your groceries, it's only up 3%. This dashboard would come up and say, uh, I got receipts and it's actually up 8%. So you're a liar. We know it's a lie. We know you're lying. It's clear that you're lying. But now they've been co-opted. And now this board is actually coming in with lower numbers than the government, lower mm. than the CPI. Uh, and so just folks, just be careful when your independent watchdogs start agreeing, uh, you know, maybe they lost the plot. I'm not going to say any allegations about, uh, what is this? Uh, what, what is, I'm going to go ahead and say their name here. Trueflation. I don't have any allegations for trueflation. I don't know any facts. I don't know what's going on in the background. I just know that stinks to high heaven. Yeah. Stinks. It's rotten. Rotten to the core. All right. Uh, any, you agree? What are I, your thoughts on the inflation numbers? They I, say it's 2.9%. I just can't believe that they adjust how, how they pull economic data 
uh, you know, every different market cycle. Of course, the world changes, sure. But like, how is how is the cost of living, the cost of housing, and the metrics that you pull from the average cost of grocery stores, how does that not have a bigger pe- impact on inflation? It, d- it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, when you see like rent and uh, mortgages is like the number one thing, and that's up uh, past the numbers as well. It doesn't make any sense. Well, folks, uh, we do have a uh, article just talking about new coins, and I want to pull up, I'm just going to do SWE, uh, SAY, and NEAR, uh, just because, you know, they're, they're kind of moving around lately. And it's talking about when coins are new, uh, it basically does this every single time. Not every single time, but on the aggregate, this is what you can expect to happen here. Nearly half of all the large airdrops reach all-time high prices within two weeks, according to a CoinGecko report. Near had an airdrop too, right? I want to say it did. I know Sui say, well, uh, we'll look. Let's just see. We're going to go to the max here. This launched in May. Uh, the two, okay. So this one took a lot longer. Well, if, if the two weeks thing felt like it should have been two months, that's why I kind of want to pull this up. This one, uh, it fell much, much longer. And then if we look at near and we hit max. Okay. So this one actually plays out. Finally, one actually plays out. So, uh, they're saying, you know, Hey man, uh, half of airdrops reach all time high price within two weeks. This is what typically happens with a large airdrop. It releases at a price higher than its fair market value at the time. Uh, the whales get out, uh, then the coin will plummet. If it's a strong project, usually after, I would say after two months, then it begins its slow and steady accumulation zone. It just starts going up and up and up. If it's a strong project, if it's a dead project, it just languishes and dies a slow death. I'm, again, I don't want to name names, um, but mm-hmm. you know, I, th- I think we all can think of some coins that maybe fit this narrative. Well, right? on that note, on Friday, I told XRP holders to look at Flare instead. Because it's got the hotness, it's got the newness. Look what happened. Look yeah, and it was uh, the biggest uh, gainer today. It's FLR. Yep, yep. FLR, 33%. Uh, Drew told you, man, he tried to tell you on the 23rd. Yep. He tried. He tried. Okay. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can lead a person to a thought, but you can't make him think. And it's, it's a good point with all these altcoins and launches. I think there's a lot of people that come into the market, uh, uh, you know, new newer in in the crypto space and they hear about a coin launch and they they do everything they can to get involved with it and they only see the prices drop immediately after typically when you getting into a coin say the day it launches or even the the first couple days there's a huge number of people that may have gotten in earlier there's sniper bots there's all kind of things that get people uh immediately allocated and those prices can drop and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good or a bad project but there's a lot of liquidity washout that happens in that first couple of days. For me, it doesn't mean I don't want to get in on things early, but I want things to launch. And if I'm not part of some initial, you know, some IDO or something where it's actually, you know, just getting put in my account before it's on exchange, I like to wait and see a couple of days uh, for it to give some sort of substance as to what what's happening with people either exiting their liquidity because they're, you know, team team vested coins or all the. There's a lot that goes into so if it's very quick, I think you posted this on your Twitter. The quicker it is, the more likely it is to fail. Yeah, uh, slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. And, you know, it's just uh, people talking about Cardano. Charles Hoskinson was on a space. And then after he left the space, people just started, you know, trashing the tech. And it was uh, the, the assessment was that I agreed with. If they don't understand the tech, talking about Cardano specifically, and so they didn't want to chop it off with someone who does understand the tech. So they wait for the person who understands the tech to leave, and then they just call it slow, clunky, don't uh, mention transaction within transactions. Uh, but that brings us to a Cardano article right here. Cardano witnesses a surge in new wallet creation amid growing investor interest here. Uh, we see a prominent cryptocurrency recently experienced a remarkable surge in new wallets in just a few days. From the 22nd to the 24th, uh, let's see, uh, the new ADA wallets created daily skyrocketed from around 1,700 to 3,200. Folks, I'm, I'll admit I wanted more than that. Uh, the surge in new wallets indicates a substantial increase in adoption and heightened investor interest in the ecosystem. Newly created wallets almost doubled, underscoring a swift and pronounced influx of users into the ADA network. Although the new uh, creation of wallets surged significantly, still falls short of the peak on the 2nd, uh, when they had 5,000 new wallets in a single day. Nonetheless, the new ADA wallets steadily approaching 4.6 million with over 1.3 wallets actively participating. All right, now Josh apparently has it fixed. Uh, so I, I do just want to finish this real quick. Uh, 1% increase in wallets holding between 0 and 10. 
uh, the wallets holding between 10 and 1,000, a decrease. Uh, looks like people are spending that ADA on these ADA alts. I think that's what it is. I wouldn't worry about a, a decrease uh, of these wallets. They're, they're just buying, they're buying up uh, meme coins, and then they're dropping their accounts or their bounce to less than 100. They load up a wallet with 600 ADA, buy some meme coin worth 580 ADA, and then they, you know, so then that metric ends up dropping. But Josh, I don't know. Can I hear you? How are you doing today? I think you should be able to hear me now. We are playing yes, musical chairs with the internet. So uh, we you still haven't some, set up the media you room took yet. took some ETH profit right and uh, paid the internet bill? What's that? Took some ETH profits and paid the internet bill there? I'm, I'm going to show the front desk. Charts are going up. They're all green. Hey, it now. feels good. So hopefully, uh, you know, they can upgrade to some fiber out here. Uh, but we'll see how, you know, if we get that fiber internet or not. But markets are looking good, guys. They look absolutely, they're just absolutely ripping right now. All coins are just pumping through the roof. We're right now at an AI conference for everybody that doesn't know. We're out here with Singularity. Um, so we'll be sitting down with like Ben Gertzel and a lot of the kind of AI experts and the founding fathers, so to speak, of the entire artificial intelligence space. So I'm excited because I don't know if you guys have been watching the news with the AI stuff right now, but uh Apparently, Google's racist. So we're going to be asking that question <laughs> to these guys, getting that lead insights uh, to what's going on with these algorithms. Why are they speaking the way they are? Uh, but also, while we're here, we're going to be learning just essentially how to, it sounds you know, kind of cringe, but how to get rich utilizing AI. Because you have you know this whole new sector that's starting to develop with, of course, things like Sora that will be launching, where your entire video production is going to be based off B-roll created by an AI tool. Uh, and actually very close after that, cinematic's done. I think there's a huge category and open industry for young entrepreneurs to start creating a new side hustle, so, you know, so to speak, where uh, you can actually start creating new tools that once weren't able to be done, where you need zero pretty much experience. You just need to learn how to type some prompts and all of a sudden you're uh, doing video production for some of the largest YouTubers. So I'm excited. Really cool conversations here. Um, how are you guys feeling though? I've barely gotten to see the markets. When the internet yeah, turns feeling on, great, man. Like it, up, Talk not. about huge narratives as you're going to, into Panama. So, I mean, we got Josh and the crew down there for an AI conference. And then at the same time, we have insane AI news. One, AGIX has just been pumping like in, like crazy. But then also, like you said, the, the Google news. Uh, of those two narratives, what's everyone talking about? So everybody's starting to trickle in, but it's definitely uh, going to be the latter of that. So, you know, they're not talking about the price action here. They're talking about why... Uh, I've heard quite a few conversations this morning on why we need to decentralize this stuff because they're tired of big tech kind of writing into the algorithms, their narratives, enforcing agendas on mass population. And as we move towards a, uh, an era of very centralized social media platforms, you're not going to have any other choice than to really utilize these large language models that are being created by these entities. So it's a really big need to decentralize that narrative. And that is definitely the first discussion we've been having on here. But tomorrow, all of the talks will start and we'll kind of see how it sparks. But Google's kind of taking the lead as the conversation for why we need to open up this network, have a true transparent open source code um, and be able to just kind of justify the reasoning behind why things are being done and not done rather than close it Josh, up. Josh, do you want the ultimate viral moment? It would take a little bit of work. Yes. Is there a FedEx Kinko's nearby? I doubt it, but I can look. <laughs> uh, just take a picture of the George Washington prompt and then just have the okay. caption, is this racist? And it'll just pop brown, up. Oh, no, brown I'll George say, Washington. Remake this image. No, no, remake no. I, I just like the actual photo that they, you know, that's going around the internet. You know, if you haven't seen, you know, check out uh, how George Washington has been yeah. pictured and then just, you know, just have that caption. You know, I think it's just a compelling image. But anyways, anyways, I digress. I digress. Uh, the well, AGIX, will, so uh, you got to, or go ahead. <laughs> I was going to okay. say, I'll hold it up like uh, Vivek did in his little, in his, his speech. But I think you're losing the internet here. Yeah, yeah, he's starting to get choppy. He's starting to get choppy. All right, Josh, you know what? Uh, we appreciate it. I'm looking forward to that video. Uh, Kelly, did you want to get anything real quick? Yeah, no, I mean, I just think it's it's it sucks that everything going on with the Google AI prompting, but in some ways, it's something that's absolutely beautiful in terms of the timeline that it's happening on right now, as blockchain and decentralization is also a key talking point for all tech industries. And this is just another huge uh, reminder that we need, that the AI currently is uh, focused from humans writing that code. And so decentralization is key here. And I think Google's doing us a service to, to remind us of it. 
All right. Well, uh, Josh, thank you very much, man. Always a good time. Looking forward to the Panama content. I think it's going to be pretty spicy. Uh, well, speaking of Google AI, Reddit and Google Forge AI partnership to boost model training. Uh, so it looks like Reddit is going to be uh, furnishing Google with enhanced techniques for model training. Under this collaboration, they will gain access to their data application programming interface, delivering real-time content from Reddit's platform. Uh, but anyone who's gone to Reddit lately, it's it's just it's a shell of its former self. So I would say this will, in many ways, make this AI worse. It's it's troll headquarters. It's troll headquarters. Also, it's an echo chamber. It's yeah. definitely people in a bubble, and they, they lost the plot uh, many many years ago. I will say that. Uh, this is a fun. Well, first, all right, the Ripple news. We got to get the Ripple news out of the way. I know there's a lot of XRP holders. I am a holder myself. SEC targets Ripple for a $2.6 billion fine in the landmark case here. Uh, Ripple uh, sold about $4.9 billion to institutional investors from Q uh, 2013 to Q3 2020. Initially valued $620 million, now estimated at $2.6 billion. Uh, so the SEC is pursuing a case against them, and then they basically just landed at this insane valuation for damages there, uh, coming up with the billions of dollars this will then go into appeals and then they'll settle on some number. And right now the markets hate uncertainty. The uncertainty is what's the number going to be? What's the final fine going to be? I think everyone's kind of assuming a fine, just what that, what is that fine going to be? And that's going to make a, a big fluctuation on what XRP's price does once that happens. Uh, I think any finalization though is probably going to be a pump. If there's some insane fine, which, you know, might hurt their balance sheet, that might take hours. That might take hours for the markets to kind of figure that out. Uh, so just be careful but, but, but trading be, that when it happens. Just so everybody doesn't get mistaken here, a fine is not the worst thing in the world because if you look at the top 200 and something banks across the world, there's been over 5,000 fines on big banking since early 2000s. So clearly the governments really like, uh, you know, institutions that get fined. It's almost like a mark that, that, uh, mark that you made it. Yeah, you mean like <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein's banker? Mm. Yeah, like, yeah, all exactly them, like yeah. that. All right, uh, PUBG, speaking of islands... We have this game. It's based on an island. It's and never mind. Uh, PUBG uh, <laughs> publisher Tap Circle to integrate in-game wallet on a new metaverse here. Uh, so USDC support for the PUBG publisher. I would say this is very, very bullish for gaming. This is one of the biggest NFT uh, slash Web three slash gaming narratives uh, I've ever seen. So integrating a Web three wallet and USDC payouts for its gaming content creators here. Uh, and so the the partnership is they're called Overdare uh, It's the PUBG uh, publisher right there, and it's a non fungible driven metaverse game. It's a joint venture between Naver Z and video game publisher Crafton, and Crafton is uh, the team behind PUBG Battlegrounds. It uh, was announced on September fifteenth, twenty twenty three, and it's going to be using the Unreal Engine five. So uh, very very bullish. And then just one story, and then one clip. We'll wrap it up here. Drew, have you seen this? Australian yeah. man vanishes <laughs> after receiving half a million dollars in crypto account error. So this man was given half a million in mis by mistake, and then he vanishes like D.B. Cooper. Yeah. Drew, what, what are your thoughts just off the gate? I mean, he's probably living in the bushes, <laughs> you know? Okay, so uh, he's, why are you against Aborigines? Oh, God. Now we're going to go down that rabbit hole. No, rabbit. let's not. Uh, although I, I heard a dingo ate his seed phrase. Um <laughs> Dingo ate a real baby. I shouldn't joke about that. Uh, I don't know if they take it serious or not. Australian man has vanished after pocketing half a million dollars when Rhino Trading uh, Limited accidentally added an extra zero to his account. Hmm. Uh, he was identified as Cal Sang Chai, and he allegedly pocketed hundreds of thousands of dollars after they credited his account with a million. Uh, it was about 652 USD instead of AD 99K. So he was supposed to have 65K and they turned that into 650K. He's only 37 years old and he has completely vanished. <laughs> <laughs> and they've issued a freezing order on his assets and an injunction preventing him from leaving Australia. Mm. Uh, is he in India already? Has he got a face change? Uh, this is not the first time an error like this has occurred. In 2021, a Melbourne couple was set to face a plea trial after they inadvertently received $6.7 million from Crypto.com. Uh, we remember that happened to a couple of Americans uh, as well from Crypto.com. Uh, during the court proceedings, the couple claimed that they believe they won a prize from the crypto exchange. Singh argued he received a notification about a comp competition from the company in the past. Mm. Uh, this is the, the Crypto.com. 
However, the compliance offer refuted any such competition, stating they did not send such notifications to his users. And then he pled guilty to recklessly dealing with the proceeds of the crime there. So, uh, interesting story. Uh, he's on a boat. Uh, yeah, he's on a boat. Uh, no, that dude's still broke. Um, I, I think it fell in the lake, right? He he put it on a self-custody cold store, and then it just fell, right? Yeah. He lost his ledger. Boating accident. It happened. I mean, a kangaroo stole it, yeah. put it in its pouch, found it away. What was I supposed to do at that point? Chase it down? No. Have you ever seen a kangaroo? They will fight you. All right. Uh, we have one post. This is hilarious, folks. Uh, have you heard Tucker Carlson narrate Lord of the Rings yet, Drew? Uh, I've listened to a bit of it. Do it we was... have sound? Yes, probably. All right. Uh, then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Folks, if you haven't heard this, this is the funniest thing I saw all weekend. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Oh, plug that back in. Plug it back in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to hear without the headphone. Oh, now it's not working. Oh, no way. Good. It doesn't work now. Yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to end this, and then I'm going to uh, yeah. start this connection one more time. You can, sh yeah. you can share the screen just so people... All right, All right zero connection. Oh, now we got two connections, All folks. right, it should work. All right, let's go back three seconds. A figure to be taken unconcernedly. This wasn't up for debate even a few years ago, but all of a sudden, you've got militarized Nazgul patrolling the Shire and threatening the ability of its citizens to travel freely. So why are some of Middle-Earth's residents, namely Saruman the White... <laughs> signing off on it. What's really going on here? This is so accurate. Four unassuming hobbits, not warriors, not politicians, are embarking on a journey that would daunt even the most seasoned adventurers. Why? Because when the fabric of freedom is threatened, it's the duty of every <laughs> citizen to stand up to tyranny. I'm inspired. Period. Period. When did we forget how to say well, actually, no, you can't just enslave the whole world. Sorry, that's not how things work. And let's be clear, these hobbits aren't delusional. Spoiler alert. They don't believe they can defeat such darkness on their own. But we all get the sense that they understand that standing up to evil, no matter how insurmountable it seems, is what separates the moral from the cowardly. Anyone with a pulse and two brain cells can't help but feel inspired by a story like this. Courage isn't just a word. It's the pillar on which every civilization worth remembering is built God, on. About to do the some moment we forget that is the moment that evil wins. All right, there you go, folks. That was just a little inspirado for the day. I thought that was pretty funny, man. Uh, is that real or is it AI? Uh, it was so real, it might as well have been real, was really telling to me is they have inflection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No but one. <laughs> I love the picture of Frodo. Like, you know, just so... Uh, that was scary. good. That was really good. Was yeah, good. yeah, right here. Uh, let's see. I don't know yeah. if it was that one. <laughs> uh, it looks like more uh, Pippin than uh, Samwise, but yeah. you know what? That was a really, really inspiring. I thought that was a really good job. Uh, AI is going to be insane, folks. So uh, that's all I got for today. Make sure you hit that like button. Um, tyranny. It's going to be used by the cowardly, but it's going to be the brave that stands up to the tyranny. And a way to do that is buy Bitcoin, hodl, just sit on it forever, escape the rat race, escape the inflation. Hit that like button on the way out, folks. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>